Let the top back like it matters Made silver spoons out of plastic I did not ask you no questions Don't give a damn about your ass whip, whip, whip from a pallet to mattress Where was you at when I needed it? I seen you shining, you had it Now I'ma make sure you panic Swear I'm so humble but act like I take it for granted I walk with the floor, 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 floor. The are granted They open my doors, I fold in like a Latin They shed them, I know they wish that they hadn't Time to pay back like It's your boy Cash Cup Productions I'm live with Lil Aubrey What's good bro, go ahead, talk your shit What's the deal baby, Lil Arby.com Say time's finest, you know what I'm talking about? All right, go ahead. Uh, just go ahead. Just introduce yourself for the people that don't know you. Man, uh, Lil Arbery, straight out of San Antonio, East Side. You feel me? Um, should I be doing this for about shit, since high school, pretty much? You know what I'm saying? Making my mark in this game in San Antonio. You feel me? Straight up, Texas next. All right. So San Antonio, born and raised. Yeah. All right. So talk about growing up. Um, you know, regular childhood, just like anybody else. I actually grew up in the projects, but I had a great childhood, you know what I'm saying? I was raised by uh, my grandmother. We moved from, uh, I was born in the Rigsby. We moved from the Rigsby when I was about five, and then uh, I grew up in Dietrich Road. And, you know, from there, just really east side born. Uh, went to um, Highlands, Sam Houston, Roosevelt. Typical east side, you know what I'm saying? But I had a great childhood, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in the projects, never wanted for nothing, to be honest, so. Mm -hmm. So family wasn't struggling or anything like that? I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? My family was struggling, but I guess from a kid, you don't know they struggling, you feel me? Um, uh, you don't know they struggling, you know what I'm saying? I never missed a Christmas, I never, I, I remember sometimes like eating toast, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I remember having my room, uh, I used to sleep in the closet just so, you know what I'm saying, we could miss the bullets, you know what I'm saying? I had a, my grandma made me, um, Blanket, all that in the closet, you know what I'm saying? TV, all that. I slept in the closet. You go outside our room, you'll see like little bullet holes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? This in the Rigsby. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. But I never really wanted for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I had everything I ever wanted. Mm -hmm. And you say you, you always stayed out on the east side? Yeah, I moved. Uh, I stayed on the northeast, too. I stayed in Camelot, stayed in Spring Hill. Um, but, yeah, pretty much my mother stayed over there. So, you know what I'm saying? I go visit my mom and stuff. But um, for the most part, yeah, I stayed on the east side. All right, talk about the evolution of the east side, like what you, how, how it was back then compared to right now. You know what, me and my dude, I saw, I saw my dude Dwayne. we were just talking, we seen this white lady, it was probably like nine o'clock at night. She was on the east, like dead on the east, jogging. <laughs> and we said, dang bro, probably like 10, 15 years ago, bro, she would've got robbed. You know what I'm saying? But not saying, I'm saying it in a good way, like, seeing the evolution of like the Wheatley Courts, Sudden Homes, East Terrace and things like that, like you can see the evolution. They just put a Starbucks on these. Like you get what I'm saying? So when I was growing up, it really looked, you know what I'm saying, poverty stricken. It really looked like, you know what I'm saying, this is where all the people that are poor look. I mean, still you can go to the East Side and you can see pretty much that this is where black people are, but it, you know, compared to what it was, it looks very nice. Now the Wheatley Courts look immaculate. I don't even know what they call no more, but the, the Wheatley Courts look good. Uh, Sun homes look good. My hood, the only hood that they ain't fixed up, Dietrich Road. They have not fixed it up, but yeah, East Side, East Side coming a long way. All right, so coming up, what were you trying to pursue in life as a kid? You know, the crazy part is I always wanted to be a rapper. I remember um, we went to a carnival. I got to get the tape from my grandmother. We went to a carnival. I was like 11, and the news was there, and they did an interview with me and my sister. And the lady said, "What you want to be when you grow up?" And I'm like 11. I'm like a rapper. So I've always, you know, um, this has been the only thing that I, I've ever really pursued, to be honest, like, and stuck with. So this, I've never wanted to be a basketball player. I never wanted to, I really get it from my, my, uh, my cousin Homeless. My cousin Marcel came down from New York and he had a tape. This is like in the 90s. He had a tape, he came down and visited. And um, he had a tape, had, it, it looked, he looked like a wreck, like a rapper that you see on TV and it's in the 90s. And I'm like, eight or something like that and then from there on I was like I want to rap too so it's been the only thing that I ever wanted to do is rap to be honest mm -hmm. was anybody around you like in your family making music or a musician or anything like that yeah my great-grandmother uh, was a famous gospel singer um, and she raised me I like I said I live with my grandmother and my great-grandmother and she had a piano in the house and an organ and every day she would be on the piano singing or she'd go on the, uh, the organ and start singing and she was a very beautiful singer um, and just growing up around that you would have thought that I would like be a singer or do gospel music she taught me how to play the piano we went and did piano lessons and all of that um, so as far as music goes um, I was inspired by my great-grandmother as far as rapping goes um, my cousin Marcel um, is really one that got me rapping 
And what what let what let what led up to your first song? Like, what did it take to get you on, in the studio for that first song? You know what? The first time we went to the studio, I it wasn't a studio. I had used my my friend AC. He had a karaoke machine, and um, his sister had a boom box. So I pressed record on the boom or on the karaoke machine and pressed the beat on the um. Cause only had one tape. Put one mic up to her um, karaoke machine, uh, uh, to a radio. I'll use the other mic and press uh, record, and I rap on that. And then when I hear it, like that, I could do it. Like, oh snap! I just made a song. Then it was like, how do I even get in the studio? Because at this time, you think that you needed to be rich. I'm thinking you need to be rich to even make a video or anything. Um, but it was just hearing myself on that little cassette. Like, dang, I want to go and see how if it's even possible to make a um, a song. And you know. You can get in the hood and people got little home studios and things of that nature and it just progresses and progresses. Yeah, I would say back then you kind of had to have a little bit more money than now for uh, putting shit into music. Exactly. The videos used to be tens of thousands, you know, right off the You're bat. You're not about to just go to your homeboy and get a video, shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, for some simple shit. You're not about to just go to your homeboy and get a video. Yeah, so coming up rapping, um, who was popping in the city at the time? When I was coming up, it was Five, Six, and Cheddar. It was uh, Avar. Avar, he was big. Uh, Barry County Boys. Mm. People like that. Kali, I ain't gonna lie, he was still jumping. Sosa, the whole Cockton Lock. This is when this is when Famous was was jumping too. You know what I'm saying? You'll go, you'll go out of town and you'll hear you'll hear Famous Lil Ken. You hear Lil Ken or you hear them boys from Third Degree. On like a Swisher House mixtape or something like that. So during that time, that's a, that's that's who was jumping. Um, and then of course, you know what I'm saying. You try to make your own little click. You know, what I'm saying like I'm about to go make me a squad. I remember trying to get signed by Third Degree. <laughs> I went in there and rap for one. I went in there. I went into uh, uh, Urban City and rap for him. Obviously, he didn't sign me, but uh, yeah, I even tried to get signed by Third Degree. Oh, Kali knows you though, right? Yeah, Kali. Yeah. Kali, that's my dude. Mm -hmm. So what kind of impact did every did all those artists have on the city back then? Like what were they doing for the city? Because I know Kylie, he gives back a lot and does shit like that. What was everybody else doing? Was it a lot of love? It, it was a lot of love. It was a lot of love. I would say, I would say it was, now right now, I would say San Antonio is way further than what we were back then. But it was, as far as the love, it was it was more love because everybody wasn't so accessible. Like you had to... You would have to open up a magazine or you would have to go to the store. You, got, you couldn't just get on the internet and see, you know what I'm saying? So these, doc, these guys were stars. You get what I'm saying? So when you go into Eisenhower or you go into uh, Windsor, you get what I'm saying? What's that mall right there that they closed down that was right there off Walsham? Windsor. Windsor, right? Yeah. So you go into Windsor and they, you go in there and you see they CDs. These are niggas from the town. You get what I'm saying? You see they CDs. You see they posters up there. You know what I'm saying? It made them look Cause you don't see them. You can't just you see them. It's on accident because you don't got the internet. They not posting and saying, "Oh, I'm over here. I'm about to do this." So when you see them, I remember seeing Question. Question was jumping too. I remember uh, Question. They have his bus. You just see his bus on the freeway or just parked like in a parking lot somewhere, and it just say like Question or you know what I'm saying. They have his. I called him. You know they have his number on there. Texas Bama. Texas Bama was jumping at that time too, but um. They was all stars and it was easy to show them love because you didn't see them every day. You wasn't about to go on Facebook and be like, let me go see what, what Sosa doing today or go see what whoever doing today. So as far and as far as giving back, this is just my personal opinion. I don't think it's the job of a rapper just because he rap to have to give back to the like that. I don't I don't I don't get that. I don't know why it's our responsibility now. It's cool, you know. Like of course, like if I want to, let's give. But I don't think it's anyone's responsibility. Like we're not politicians. You get what I'm saying? We're not. Now, if we want to take that route, then of course do that. But. I don't think it's so whoever decides to go give, you know, I want to feed this person. I don't want to do that. And I'm not knocking nobody that does. I'm not knocking nobody that doesn't. Just saying, I don't think it's anyone's responsibility as a rapper to have to, oh, let me go feed the homeless or let me go do this. That's not. And if you do that, hey, much love to you. You know, I'm actually that type of guy. Like, I don't, you wouldn't see me on Instagram and stuff. Um, I don't do any of that. Right. But I am that type of guy. Right. But I don't think that it's my responsibility to do it. 
so any rapper that does it is cool any rapper that doesn't do it hey no problem i don't i don't think that's our responsibility